Hey guys, and welcome back to the Independent Podcast. Yes. We are here answering your questions from TikTok and Instagram with Nick D and Connor Price and myself, and let's jump right into it. Let's do it. All right, guys, the first question is, if at the beginning of your journey, you knew what you know now, what would you do differently? Well, I'll jump in. Um, I would have, I would have stopped doing, (laughs) I would have stopped doing remixes sooner. Um, as we talked about in the recent Q&A, uh, there's sort of a box that you put yourself in when you're known as being the remix guy or the cover artist or anything like that. And I was doing a lot of remixes, like if I was a feature on this song type content, and uh, it was it was making people follow me for just that content and liking me for that style of content. So when I tried to promote my original music, it was much more difficult. So yeah, I would have uh, done it at the start to grow the fan base, which I did, um, but I, I did it a bit too long. And I put myself in a box, so I would have stopped that sooner. That's the first thing I can think of. Nick, what about you? I don't know if this answer is cliche or not. But I think there's so much value in knowing the whys behind the whats. Like, why did you stop doing the remixes? Mm. You know? So... It's really easy to say, yeah, I'd go back and I would have just not promoted those other 10 songs before I promoted Pineapple. I would have promoted Pineapple the whole time or, you know, just little things like that. But I think the, I think I love where I'm at because I've learned why I'm at where I'm at. I know the ins and outs of all of it and that makes me dangerous. Ooh. I just got a little bit of the chills. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that? Like that's why I can have a call. I'm not going to say it's a major label and they can say like, you know, what 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 do you need? And I can say I don't need anything. Mm-hmm. Y'all emailed me. <laughs> Dude, I have I have been on a call with Nick in a label and he has said that word for word. I was going to say didn't you straight up say that to someone over a phone he call? He did. That's he amazing. Did. Yeah. A, ma- a major label, and and I, that's like, and it was like the head of A and R at the label. They said, "Nick, what do you need?" And he said, "With all due respect, you emailed me." That I don't need. <laughs> that's anything. crazy. Uh, I love it. I love that answer. Okay, so Nick would not change anything because the journey has been equally as important to where he's at now. Can so I, much. Can I add one thing? Because th- this is a big thing that I wish I did sooner. Was uh. I would stop uh, trying to be such a perfectionist with everything that I would do. I, I would care so much about the artwork having to be perfect, the mix having to be perfect, turn the kick up one dB. Okay, you know what? Let me try this. Like I was obsessing over these little details and comparing my songs to other songs and trying to match the vocals and all this kind of stuff. And all that was doing was slowing me down. Because at the end of the mm. day, the person that hears it doesn't hear all the different versions or is comparing it to they something else. Know. They they hear it for what it is. Yeah, but based off what Nick said, now because you were that way, now you know why it's less important. Oh, true. So I'm, you needed to go through it. True. I'm just answering the question of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. knowing knowing what yeah. I know now, if I could go back in time, I would, yeah, yeah I yeah, would yeah. like, yeah. even even like the artwork, like no, no one looks at an artwork on Apple Music and is like, oh, I'm not going to listen to that. I mean, they, they might on very rare occasions if the, the artwork the, is like crazy weird or whatever. But like, the people that don't do obsess so much not, over that. Just like get get something you know, appealing on the artwork, even if it's like what Russ does. It's just one color with a little image in the middle. Um, I know your artwork is 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 similar. You you, you even it, correct me if I'm wrong. Sometimes you go to like stock websites and just get a like a stock no, yeah. footage. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's what pineapple was. Look at the artwork on that. It's like a pineapple with like some watercolor background. Thirty five million streams later, like. I'm over here yeah. stressing about artwork. It's like, it's just slowing me down. Just like, get it, get it, it good, it used put to it be out different. there and move on to the next one. It used to be different. I put some thought into my album artwork, like oh, my yeah, yeah, one yeah. album's artwork, but it used to be different. Like the artwork on an album, like a physical CD, someone's buying. I feel like, you know, it just used to be way different. Like you could tell a story with that. Like you kind of had to. I still think and, for and albums could, it's different. It's more important. Yes, yes, I agree. But with all these singles, man, it's like release it. Yeah. Why are you you know, why are you why are you thinking about it so much? Couldn't agree more. Next question. You guys have kind of answered this 
in the past in different ways, but I just want to reply to this person. How do you stay motivated when as an independent artist, we have to do everything? Everything, what? I think, hey, I think there's, I think that there's people who are built for independent artists to be an independent artist. And I think there's people who are built to need a team and there's nothing wrong with either, uh, either or, you know, obviously I'll advocate for independent every time. But that doesn't make one person less of a person than the other person. And most times it'll just make them more aware. Like for you to be like, I'm aware enough to know that I'm not really about this life and I need help. Mm -hmm. I need help marketing. I need help creating content. I need help, blah, blah, blah. I just want to make music. And maybe it's best for you to get signed, you know. Um, What was the question? How do you stay motivated? When as an independent artist, you have to do everything. So have you it, ever struggled? Like, do you have days where you're like, yeah, I don't oh, know if yeah, I want to do this everybody. anymore. Oh, I don't know about that. Well, maybe maybe just that, for the day. Like, like, oh, I don't know if I want to. <laughs> film that TikTok I mean, or like, write that song, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you don't want to film a TikTok, here's how I do it. Um, this is kind of like with my family, with my kids. If my son asks me to do something, and in that moment, uh, I have enough energy. Like if someone said, hey, you want to film a TikTok real quick? If I have enough energy to film a TikTok, I have enough energy to play with my son. Mm. Um, Like I'm never going to be like, oh, I'm too tired from filming these TikToks. When I would, if I had film another TikTok, then I would, I'm going to play with my son. So I just say that to say like, uh, you got to love it. Like, I think when you love it, it's not a question of motivation. Like, like I don't get up and, and do this stuff and, like, dwell on it. Like, I look forward to it. And I want to be here every day. I want to make me. I want to make content. Now, some days, yeah, I'm just like, ah, I'm just going to stay at home a few extra hours before I go into the studio. Or I get to the studio and... I'm having a blech day. Mm -hmm. That happens to everybody. That doesn't mean, you know, you get rid of that and then you come back tomorrow or you come back later in the day, you know? I I think if if you're just saying, like, I'm not motivated, that just means you don't want it bad enough. I'm always going to come to that. Yeah, I think a lot of answers boil down to that. How bad do you want it? I think one of the biggest things that's helped me with motivation is trying to minimize regret as much as possible because I think that's my biggest fear is to get to the end of my life and regret yeah. things. And I feel like yeah. one of the biggest things I would regret is like looking back, you know, I'm I'm in my 20s. I'm in that time in my life where, where I should be working as hard as I can. And I would hate yeah. to look back and be like, damn, why, like, why did I procrastinate so much? Why did I not, you know, do that? And so I'm trying to minimize that feeling by just waking up every day, trying to do the most that I can. And uh, I'm, ultra, I'm also naturally a little bit competitive. And I used to channel that competition looking at other artists and comparing myself, which was just a dangerous thing. So I instead, instead of getting rid of that competition, because I couldn't, it was natural, I started just competing with myself. I was like, all right, what did I do yesterday? Okay, let me try to one-up that the next day and just keep, because even if you do that by 1% every day, over the year, that's over 300%. You're like tripling what you did at the start. It's like, try to, try to, if you're a competitive person, instead of comparing yourself to others, just compete. Compete with your streams with from yourself. the day before. Yeah. Cool. All right, next question. Um, how real do you- quick, Real quick, real oh. quick, real quick, real quick. Yeah. I just want to say, because I said- If I'm too tired from filming TikToks, I just want to make a point. Because a lot of people, they look at like, you ain't do nothing today. You film some videos and you recorded a song, right? Like, uh, I I mean, like, it's not physically demanding often. Mm -hmm. But what I I just want to touch on is it's mentally draining. Like, it depletes you of your... Because you have to be on. You have to be on in this kind of industry when you're speaking to people, when you're creating content, when you're doing, you have to kind of be on at all times. And uh, it can be draining for you mentally, emotionally, you know, and then you, you need a minute to recharge. So I don't mean like if I'm tired, like ex- I'm so exhausted, I filmed some videos today. I just mean like I, uh, 
Like, I want to not do anything, and I just want to sit and watch a movie or something because my my mind is exhausted. That's kind of what I... I just want to touch on that. I think that was really important to touch on because I think it's a misconception that people have about creators, whether you're in music or comedy, whatever you do. Like, it's not the physical draining. It is the mental. Like, some days you could ask me, hey, Bree, do you have an idea for a TikTok? And genuinely, I can say, no, I am... My social battery, my creative battery is at zero today. And then the next day, I'll have 20 TikTok ideas. Um, so yeah, I'm just piggybacking off of what Nick said, but I just love that he brought that up because that his, is a huge issue that people don't understand. Yep. All right, next question. Um, how do you convert TikTok engagement to streams? This boils back to not asking anybody for anything. In my opinion. And one thing I told Connor was don't comment saying go stream my song. This is what it's called. Uh, I wait for someone to ask. What's this song? Is this song out? I respond to that comment and I'll pin that comment. Yep. Because when people see that. That was just me answering someone's question. That wasn't me forcing or trying to be greedy or needy and saying, go listen to my song right now. If you love cats, go listen to my song. <laughs> you know, like, if you hate turtles, don't. You know, like, I don't. I'm not, you know, it's like. As I'm when drinking people a plastic think, watermelon. <laughs> I did too, but. You know what I'm saying? I do. You switch to that. I want to add to it too because Uh, it's such brilliant psychology behind it because people naturally don't like being sold to. That's why we fast forward commercials. We we don't like the feeling of somebody trying to sell us something. And You want what other people want too. Yeah, and you also want to feel like you're organically discovering it, um, which is why I think you're – talk up TikToks, for example, work so well. Like a lot of times if you just scroll on your For You page and you just see a guy who's like, hey, m- my new song is out, go stream. And it's like, oh, someone's trying to sell me their song. It's like you you naturally just right scroll there. away. Where you, you'll you have these brilliant engaging hooks and people are now engaged with you. And then all of a sudden you start singing and you're like, oh, wait, I like this song. It's, you're almost in a way yeah. like <laughs> tricking them into listening to your song. Um, but going back to the comment thing, Instead of pinning a comment of like, my song is out, go stream it, which is just like sell, 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 you pin a Mm -hmm. comment that says, hey, is this on Spotify? And then you respond to it and say, yep. And so somebody who sees that is like, oh, someone else is asking about this Mm -hmm. and Nick is just responding. They they feel like they're naturally just discovering the fact that it's on Spotify instead of being told and sold. Yeah, I hope I'm explaining yep, that right. Exactly. Like yeah, that psychology is really I remember smart. Nick gave you that advice and you implemented it. So yeah. now we wait for the comment that says, is this out? You reply, pin mm-hmm. it. Has that worked for you? Oh, brilliantly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. So one, it works. One other thing <laughs> is I see somebody doing this and I told him, his name's Mike. Because Mike's somebody I'm kind of giving advice to with his TikTok growing. And he's growing now. He's got like over 50K followers when I first started Amazing. Giving him advice like a month ago, he had like under 10K or something, under 5K, I don't remember. Um, and he's getting streams converted. But anyway, one thing he keeps doing, and Nate's doing it too, another one, is they'll be like, they'll do the talk up. They'll be like, blah, 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 blah. This is my new song. And I'm like, what? Stop. <laughs> you did, what? <laughs> stop so telling close. people. Stop telling people about your song. <laughs> Let them find out that it's a song. Right. Uh, I'm gonna <laughs> tag Mike and hey, Nate. Bro, in this I'm telling you, just you so could do the can. whole talk up. You could do the whole talk up, and they're, they're like, "You got them five seconds in." You're like, "My new st- swipe." <laughs> I'm like, I'm like worried about your dang song, bro. No, it's true though. It's right. Let them let them find out. That's it. That's the- you know what's another point. I'm gonna jump on that one. I've seen artists do. They'll promote the song super well, and then at the end, the text pops up out now on all platforms. I yeah. personally think that TikTok lowers engagement on videos that are actively selling you something i was gonna say i also don't know this for a fact but yeah i think there's something behind that if tiktok and instagram too can sniff out through algorithm through automatic scanning that you're trying to get them off platform they will reduce your reach if they think you're promoting something and yeah something that will get them off the app they might hide it from the algorithm which is also why and we know this is a fact 
TikTok hide. is hiding comments where you say link in bio. Yep. And so that's why people have to now you, you'll you'll notice you'll notice creators might be saying like uh, it rhymes with stink and cryo. Like they're finding <laughs> different ways to like say link in bio without saying it. If you've n- been noticing that, that's why. It's right. Because if you say it straightforward, TikTok hides it. Yeah. Crazy stuff, guys. All right, next question. As TikTok is banned in India, is Instagram Reels the best alternative? Yes. yes. Wow, great question. I uh, I recently started posting Reels on the back end of my Instagram, and I went up, what, like 100,000 followers in three weeks? It's something crazy and like if I, that. And when I went into my analytics, the, the number one countries, it was like U.S., Canada, India. And India was way up there. And then I started noticing that in my Spotify for artists, India was all of a sudden in my top five countries of listeners. And because TikTok is banned there. So they're discovering artists through Instagram reels. Guys, this is an awesome point. If you didn't know, TikTok is banned in India. So if you're trying to build a more international audience, China Instagram well, reels is where to post. Um, we're going to come out with some courses soon and really get into the nitty gritty of it. And like um, our how we create the content and how we really do post. But like, just in general, Instagram Reels backend is great for international listeners. Sorry, Nick, Agreed. we like didn't even let you speak on that one, but nah, nah. Connor's Connor's more uh, real savvy than I am. This next question then is perfect for Nick because I think this is more of a Nick question. How long do you think a song should be? Well. What do I do? Yeah, what do you do? Okay. Because I don't think there's like a what do I think it should be. I think what do I think is best for algorithm, for people listening, for people consuming, for blah, blah, blah. I make short songs. I make two-minute songs. Sometimes I make a minute and 48-second song. Uh Rarely do I make a song over three minutes, and I and then you know I do. I, sometimes I do chorus, verse, chorus, verse, end it. Sometimes I do verse, chorus, verse, chorus, end it. Sometimes I give you the chorus on the third time, whatever feels right. But it's uh, for me, short songs. They'll listen more times. Ah, uh. right. You can you can listen to a two minute song twice the same amount of time you can listen to a four minute song once. So that answer is not coming from an artistic perspective, no, but artistic. a business perspective. Yes, not artistic. And it's funny because like, I feel like people could debate this all day long. Um, but if someone's goal is to get millions of streams and make a living, the person I know in my life that is doing that is Nick D. And this is what he's doing. So if that's your goal, listen to Nick D. <laughs> Yeah, uh, talking to you about that was cool because it kind of changed my approach when I'm looking at structure, uh, especially the one note you made where you said sometimes, um, as you just mentioned earlier, you don't give them the chorus at the end and the song will just mm-hmm. end and you'll have like a quick like, and then it'll cut. And now it's like, wait, I want to hear the chorus again. So what do you do? You play the song again. So we'll sometimes if you give them too much, uh, yeah. it might be an artistic reason, which is totally fine, but that's a different uh, conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you hear it and it's, it's great. Uh, but yeah, if you're trying to go for the replay value, sometimes you just give them enough, but not too much. And then you make them want to play it again. It gives it replay value. Yep. Sweet. Love that. Next question. What agency or website did y'all use to advertise your music before TikTok? I'm just trying to trace back the steps that you guys did to grow. Let's start with Nick. Uh, I, back when I first started, and this is before I knew anything, I I mean, I've been winging everything the whole time and just learning as I go. Mm-hmm. I ran some Instagram ads, some back-end Facebook, Instagram story ads, targeted, blah, blah, blah. Uh, would I do that today? Absolutely not. Um, but I did it, and I don't. Yes, I saw Instagram follower growth, you know, not a ton, but I saw some growth. I saw some stream conversion. But when it comes down to it, 
when I posted on TikTok, none of those people that were following me from ads or listening from ads had anything to do with me then going viral and now having a career, if if that makes sense, in music. None of anything that I did with ads had any effect on that moment. So I don't look back and say, oh, if I didn't do the ads, I wouldn't be where I'm at. Same. Because TikTok had no idea, the, the people on TikTok had no idea that I already had a little bit of a following on Instagram or a few monthly listeners on like, you know, a few hundred thousand monthly listeners on Spotify or whatever that I, uh, they had no idea. I was brand new. Yeah. They're like, who's this guy? You know? So when he says, go back and see where you started, I would just start at TikTok. I wouldn't, I wouldn't overthink it. TikTok, back end reels. Don't post your reels on your main feed because people don't care. The people that already follow you don't care. And I don't know why that is. Some of them do. Uh, but the majority of them like, oh, it's Nick again. Swipe. They might even give it a quick double tap to show some love. But the algorithm doesn't care about a double tap. They care about people watching this video. Mm-hmm. So back end reels, because most of the time it's going to people who are consuming reels. I actually want to point this out because Nick did an experiment where he posted the same TikTok on his main feed versus back yeah. end. And um, I don't yeah. have the numbers at the top of my head. I'll pull them up when I edit this. But... Back end was significantly is. better. He's, he's going to tell you. It was for back uh, Pretty end was, Faces. Back end, back end was 1.9 million views Whoa. on Pretty Faces. What was main feed? Back end. Main feed for a long time was 78,000. and Because that's just my main feed. And then because the back end one went. My main feed one started to go in the back end after that because my sa- the sound got traction. Wow. Right? So now that one started to go. Now Now the one that was later, like three weeks after the back end one went, now that one has almost 700,000. And then I reposted the same video again the other day, and it's almost got 200,000. The same video three times on the back end. That is crazy. We so, should post a, a you said one again on the back end. When, when you did that experiment, you posted them back to back, like within minutes. Back to back. And was it the, the exact same caption? Yeah. <laughs> exact same. No, no. Well, one caption was uh, more more catered a little bit to like. Your followers. No, I, I get what you're saying. But there were, there was no hashtags, right? You didn't do anything different on that? No, never, never. Yeah, no, never, no hashtags. That's no, crazy. no That's hashtags crazy. on Reels. We've never used hashtags on Reels, and it's worked swimmingly for us. Yeah, so it's the exact yeah. same video. Just one on the back end, one on your main feed, and the back end did way better. Um, just to wrap oh, yeah. this question up, Connor did the same thing before TikTok. We were running Facebook ads. His Facebook grew pretty fast. He had like 80,000 followers, but they were not converting to streams. No. Um, Connor did a collab with Idris Elba. He got Courtney Cox in the music video. Um, both of them posted about it on their main Instagram feeds. Again, and a bunch of playlists. New Music a, Friday, a bunch UK. of playlists picked it up. Yeah. Barely any traction. The song went viral on TikTok. That Game was my, over. That was my most streamed day. So yeah. Long story short, um, don't try ads from this get go. Just start on TikTok. There's or, so or, many organic. ways to get organic, free growth. It's almost silly to think of investing any money into your music right now. Okay, next question. Should every release have a music video or should I focus on TikTok and keep the budget for recording vocal production? Short form content. No one cares about your music video. Cool. Connor, agreed? I agree. Uh, in addition, though, is is there a, a time when a song is so popular that you should do a music yeah. video? If you want to do a music video to scratch a creative itch, do a music video for fun. If if I do think sometimes songs earn music videos. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, like, for example, I'm sure you will see a Handsomer and Caitlyn music video. Yes, as they should. Uh, yeah, I, I just they, noticed... Um, the artist Aniz, who I'd love to get on at one point, that'd be awesome to talk to him. He has that song "Sun and Moon" that's popping off. He's done a bunch of uh, open verse challenges. Did the remix with John Roa, who's a Filipino artist. He just announced today he's doing like a full, like professional music video. So I think, like you said, there's something about a song does so well it sort of earns the music yeah, video. Yeah, we got Sadie Jean. Yeah, and it's uh, a good branding play to have a very professional music video. 
when people first, you know, if they, they might discover Anise a few days or weeks from now, they're going to search him up. That music video is probably yeah. going to pop up first and it looks really professional and policy. It creates a good first impression. So I think, yeah, I think if, you know, a song can earn a music video and can be a good play for just your branding and your visuals. But should every release have one? No. Absolutely. 100%. No, focus on the short form no. content. Short it's, form content. It's 100%. just, and then should is different, always different than what do you feel like doing as a creative? Mm hmm. You can do the music video, but don't expect your music video to blow up your song. Right. Don't expect your music video to go viral. Don't expect clips of your music video to go viral. It's a different game now, you know? Make make short form content and maybe drive traffic to your music video or to your Spotify. But don't expect your music video to do the work for you. Best way to put it. I couldn't have put it better. Um, next question. This is coming from a producer. As an artist, what is it that you want from a producer the most? Get beats and then go through them? Or do you prefer to make a track together, like work on a project? Go for it, Nick. It depends. I mean, back back before, just just send me some send me some beats. But I was always picky with with who I was working with and oftentimes people DM you, yo, want a beat pack? It's not how you should do it. We spoke with with Cato about this. Mm -hmm. You know, say, hey, I made these beats specifically for you, based, inspired by Icy Pop and Serotonin or whatever. You know, I made these songs specifically for you based on Smooth, you know. Um, but as far as, like, what I do now, I work directly with, with Graham uh, almost every day. So, but we built the relationship over, you know, 200 demos uh and and 100 masters you know so it's like we have that like we're friends now you know we have that relationship um so now is a little bit different than what i would recommend to somebody but yeah i think all in all it's important to provide value but make sure you do it in a personal way, like you said, so it's not it doesn't feel like a copy and uh, copy and paste. Or find some artists yeah. that, uh, and Kato worded this well, not to uh, reach up all the time. Find some artists that are more on your level where you're at in your production career, and build a relationship with them, like Nick has with Graham. Mm. Graham is the Ryan Lewis to his Macklemore. They work on projects every day. Earlier today, they were zooming and they write songs together. So do that. So either approach maybe some larger artists in a personal way or find artists that are doing what you're doing and grow become friends with them and grow together. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, next question. When just starting out, what's the most important thing I should focus on? How should I balance music and life, especially when still in school? I, I was uh, daydreaming. <laughs> <laughs> when just starting out, what's the most important thing to focus on? How should I balance music and life, especially when still in school? Well, I'll say this. When when I first started making music, I was husband, father, small business owner with my photography business. And I owned a home, so I had home stuff to take care of. All of that stuff. Uh, I, I had every reason not to make music right yep. but i always made the time found the time because it was important to me um i would on the way to shooting a wedding i typically had a 30 minute to an hour drive to wherever the wedding venue was i would play instrumentals through the car speakers and write songs on the way there write songs on the way back i would record vocals while my photos were exporting um like waiting, okay, I got to export these photos. It'll be 30 minutes. I'm going to record vocals while that happens. Um, so I all, like, I'm always an advocate for just make the time, find the time. If it's important to you, you'll find a way. If it's not, you'll find an excuse. And do you really want it bad enough? Cool. I don't think there's any other way to answer that. So I'm just going to move on because that was the perfect answer. Uh, this is an interesting question. We haven't heard something like this before. If I were to release cinematic orchestral music and then more mainstream music that you would hear on the radio, would you recommend having two different artist names to have music under to keep the content mix consistent for each of the two types? I don't, I don't mind that, but I don't think you need it. Um, but I don't mind it at all. I don't mind separating it. Um, 
but for example, I like I love hip hop. I still rap. I drop a rap song every now and again, mixed in there with some ballads, mixed in there with you know what people know me most for the pop stuff. Um, I do it all in the same place, so I don't know. Yeah, I would say keep it all the same. I feel like because it's all under the same umbrella of music, and there's something very uh, appealing about being a versatile artist or a versatile pr- producer. So if somebody sees orchestral production next to a different kind of more you know mainstream produced beat, that's impressive. Um, I feel like the the whole thing about when we talk about separating things is if like you do music and then you have a comedy skit channel. Oh, yeah. Those are so different niches, separate them. But I feel like if it's different, varying genres within the same medium, which in this case is music, keep it all together. Yeah. Cool. How should you determine what video content should be recorded with a professional camera or just with your phone? That's a great question. And we were just kind of recently talking about this because Nick has been promoting this song, which I think is his best song, called Minefield. And he created all of this content with this like crazy 4K 360 camera. And he had this incredible content. He was in Europe filming and he was in with these castles and these mountains and all this kind of stuff. And for whatever reason, because the content was so great and the music is great. They weren't in the algae. They weren't in the algorithm. The videos were not doing anywhere near as well as his usual video does. And then he posted a video. That, that I that, secretly filmed of him. And it was shot with an iPhone in the studio that he's in right now. He's in Crocs dancing like a chicken. <laughs> Listening back to the demo. It wasn't even mixed. We're hearing the song through the speakers. It's like, it's everything you think would be, this is low quality visually and audio wise. It got a million views in an hour. <laughs> it was like one of his strongest performing videos in the first hour. So it's like. He's over there like, are you guys going to let me speak? Or are you just going to talk about me? Nah, 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 I'm here. I'm listening. <laughs> Go. Go, go, go. No, I don't got nothing. Yeah, I don't got nothing to say. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Um, I've I've done pieces of content where I use my Sony A7S, which is a, a fancy DSLR, and visually it looks cool and it does really well. And sometimes it doesn't. And I shoot iPhone footage that does well. Sometimes it doesn't. It, it really depends on the content and it has to feel organic. And sometimes shooting something too high production value makes it lose that organic feel. Basically, so I, like if yeah. you have an iPhone, do not invest in a professional camera. No, you don't need it. You don't need it to go viral on TikTok. You don't. You I just do need an iPhone. I not that's needed, yeah. All right. Wait, wait. Nick, you want to add to that at all? Nope. <laughs> okay. Um... I think this is the last question. I was forgetting to record how long this episode is, but it feels like it's been a it's good time. It's 33 minutes. We're, yeah. All right, cool. Um, let me see. I want to pick a good question to end on. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, this one. This one Nick will like. When creating rap lyrics or just lyrics in general, what are your thoughts on using the same rhyming words frequently or back to back? Whoa. That's a such a specific, unique question. I'd love to hear what Nick says about it. You talking about uh, if I had a dollar for every time that I thought of you, I would be the richest man alive from just the thought yes, of you. Yeah, that exactly. would be an example for sure. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I know you love it. That's why I said you're going to love this question. I love it. I, I do it often. I do it. Uh, I would say in every song. <laughs> Dude, give me just give about. me an example of one of your favorite ones. You did one recently in a demo where you said like you use dog. <laughs> that one and you're like <laughs> that's great if I <laughs> I'm not Stevie Wonder's dog uh what was it <laughs> but that was cool because I mean yeah there's certain times when rappers do it where they're saying the same word but it has different meanings and that's cool and then there's other times where it might be the same meaning uh, excuse me the same meaning like the if I had a dollar for every time that I thought of you I would be the richest man alive from just the thought of you but I like I heard that song so many times and it didn't register with me that you were repeating the same thing. Sometimes it just works and you just go with it and it feels right. Like you're, you know, you're saying feels right, don't it? It felt right. So just do it. <laughs> I don't like tooting his horn too much because he gets it so often. But man, Nick is the king of repeating words. But in making a different it work. Way, yes. But making yeah, yeah, it yeah. work. He'll come up with a different <laughs> meaning for, oh my God, I can't even think of an example because he does it every day. <laughs> 
Is he smirking? I can't see him. Oh, of course he is. We're gassing him up. Oh, Um, my God. But the only downside to it is there are always going to be those trolls in the comments. That's not a downside to me. That's an upside because they are just increasing a comment. Engagement. But yeah, you're going to get those people that are like, wow, rhyming dog with dog, thumbs up, good for you, what a great rapper, but what'd you say, Nick? <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's always going to be those, so oh, man. if you don't After- mind dealing with those trolls. Then... What's that? Oh, okay. Uh, Nick's mic just went out, so we're going to wrap up this I think episode. we ended on a good answer there. <laughs> That was great, yeah. Basically, yeah, Nick is the king of it. He loves it. He's all for it. As long as it's done in an intelligent and creative way. Yeah. Um, Not just for the sake of being lazy and not having any other words to use. All right, cool. Thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions, ask them in our TikTok or Instagram comments, and you could be featured in our next Q&A. Peace. Don't know what a shot is. Yeah, she know I'm gon' get it there. The way she move her body, yeah, she know just what she doing here. She don't mess with anybody, nah. Not a single person here, whoa.